Hello my Sock Universe and welcome to this Bundesliga weekend review and what a weekend it was. We had two big name matchups both delivered. Uh, we had a record that was not to be uh, and most people are happy about that that we didn't get a new uh, German record and yes uh, we may or may not have a title race. I think we have lots to talk about. So basically, gave you already the headlines. Despite the great matchups, we had no lead changes, no new record, and I have to say, Holland at his best. Absolutely, Holland at its best. We also saw that. Uh, hopping into the games, I mean, Friday evening, it was a wonderful Gladbach Bayern game. Um, that it must be so satisfying for Marco Rosa to have a match plan and the match plan working out perfectly despite the game not going perfectly at the beginning because you know Bayern is dominant yes they get a penalty that was one of the weirder handballs uh, but fully deserved I mean uh, the way Florian Neuhaus he's stretching his hand towards the ball you can see him moving up towards the ball and possibly touching it but just for that I thought this is absolutely handball that needs to be given and so it was uh, Lewandowski up 1-0 Bayern snaps a streak they are going ahead after I think uh, eight games gave us a row when the first went down and then uh, Lirus uh, Sané plays the ball to Koretska who from a distance really slams it into the net and you think all smooth sailing however Gladbach had a plan and the plan was, yeah, um, since Bayern is uh, playing such a high line on the back play, uh, whenever you get the ball, uh, get it between the lines and then quickly forward towards Hofmann. And that worked like a charm twice. And twice it was on the transition where Bayern is losing the ball. And I think twice it was Sule who kind of uh, was responsible. Twice the ball uh, is quickly played uh, from Benzavani to Stindl, who plays the deep ball to Hoffmann, who can twice score just before the half. And suddenly a game that was in 26 seems like it's done and dusted. It's 2-2, 36th and 45th. And um, probably was even deserved at, the, at, at that point because Gladbach just avoided giving up. Stuck to, to the plan and executed it to perfection. And then uh, right after the half, Hofmann himself gives an assist to Neuhaus and Neuhaus slams it into that because he's given way too much space. Again, Bayern's... Uh, and you know, the, the whole um, play, I mean, it goes on, on the left uh, attacking side and everyone is shifting towards uh, Hofmann who then just has to play to Neuhaus. Who of course wanted to make up for his weird hand handball and put it in the end into the corner it was it was a greatly taken goal what followed was utter dominance by Bayern but not even half chances I mean I really thought that Bayern um, had Gladbach on the ropes and Gladbach was holding on but Bayern never had any big chances either I think on balance of play probably 3-3 three, three would have been deserved I would give Bayern that but um, it was not uh, undeserved, let's put it that way, that Gladbach won. But I think a draw would have been the right result here. But a huge result that opened the door. Everyone thought, yeah, we, we might get now a really good title race, especially if Leipzig will win against the struggling Dortmund side. But we're not there yet. In the afternoon, and since the due to the snow chaos in Spain, I actually could watch most of the afternoon games in the so-called conference. And yeah, Bayer Leverkusen Bremen are uh, not the greatest of games. Uh, Topper giving Bremen a lead right after the half, and then Schick uh, deserved equalizer for Le Leverkusen. But I think overall the 1 1 was well deserved. Uh, Freiburg absolutely destroying Köln. Um, doesn't look good for them. We'll, we'll see about them a little bit later. Uh, two under silver penalties give uh, Frankfurt a 2 0 win over Mainz in the Derby, the Main Derby. And then uh, Schalke, they were they could not not win this one. If they would not win it, they would equal the record of uh, Tasmania Berlin of uh, games of, of a not winning streak or losing streak in a way. And 
boy, were they hanging out. Uh, Hoffenheim, playing in the rather interesting jerseys, were having quite a few chances, and, and Schalke cut in. Yes, uh, Matthew Hoppy was having uh was causing trouble or or, or no. but Hoffheim really controlled the game it was a little bit against the runner runner play when Hoppy gets the ball nicely and he really for uh, such a young guy uh flicking it over the goal in the internet that, that was a world class finish and then right after the half he twice again it was always um assist by Harit he twice again hits uh, the net and gives Schalke a 3 0 lead by the 63rd. I mean, 57 6, 63rd. Schalke were up 3 0, and yes, it was lucky, but it was like something had broken. Uh, the dam broke loose, and they even added a fourth one through Harit. Uh, I personally was happy to see Schalke finally win, win again. Yes, Schal Schalke is among my favorite teams as well. So, yeah. Uh, great result for Schalke. It may not be enough to avoid re relegation, but at least you have this pesky streak. I mean, it was almost, if not exactly, a year without a win. That's a pretty tough, tough, tough streak. So very happy for Schalke. Uh, the Union Berlin Wolfsburg game was also interesting because um, in the 10th minute, Renato Steffen, the smallest uh, player on, on the field, had it after Arnold Corner uh, into the net, uh, give all Wolfsburg a lead. Becker, who missed a, a sitter before, gets the equalizer with a quite uh, well-taken shot. But that was definitely harder than a sitter before. Um, Arnold is in sent off early in the um, uh, second half. And Andrich, uh, right thereafter from the, I think, resulting free kick, uh, makes a wonderful free kick goal uh, to give only on the 2-1 lead. But then, uh, just a few minutes later, a uh, penalty is given to Wall, Wolfsburg and Vejos can convert and the game ends in a 2-2 draw. Both teams staying kind of atop the table. And then the stage was set for Leipzig Dortmund, Dortmund. A huge clash for both teams. It probably meant a little teeny bit more for Dor Dortmund because this was the way to really claw themselves potentially back into the title race and maybe secure, make it even a bit more secure that you will uh, play in the Champions League next season. First half had had many good things like there was a good uh, speed there was good intensity but there were hardly any goal uh, scenes but the game kicked into another gear picked up steam in the second half and it was Holland who was irresistible I mean the first goal in the 55th minute he runs down the side plays the ball in and Marco Royce flicks it with his back heel filthily to it, Sancho. It was exactly what was needed. Sancho can pull it into the M and that one nil door Dortmund. A little bit later, Haaland uh, takes a header that hits the crossbar. Uh, on the other side, though, Olmo also hits the post. But at that point, Dortmund was firmly in control of the, of, of the game. And then I have to say, the second goal uh, by Haaland was a wonderful team move where he had it in. And the third one, how uh, he uh, goes past everyone. Uh, that was just Holland at his very very best in the 84th. Surloth, not a Norwegian, pulls one back for Leipzig. It was a too little too late. Um, that was a statement win for Dortmund. And this is exactly what we know. Dortmund can be great. The problem is they are inconsistent. And this might be just one that they pulled out of the head and then next uh, round they will not do anything again remains to be seen. So in the table, Leipzig had the big chance to go past Bayern. They don't. Uh, they lose. The only thing is that Bayern's chance of winning a championship went a teeny bit down uh, at the cost of Dortmund uh, being up. Um, it is now a pretty clear picture and we'll see a little bit more about that. Who will be in the Champions League? I mean, it's Bayern, Le Leipzig, Le Leverkusen, Dortmund are also favorites. Outside chances for Wolfsburg and Gladbach only, who are kind of the second um, tier pack that I would arguably say goes until Frankfurt, potentially Stuttgart, who uh, also got a win. Uh, uh, this, uh, on Sunday, I didn't really see much more, much, much of the Sunday games. Um, on the bottom, a big change is that Bielefeld, who won against Hertha, not only uh, kind of drag now Hertha into the relegation battle a little bit, but also go ahead of Köln, Schalke going ahead of Mainz, uh, meaning Köln is now in serious trouble. 
And after they won at Dort at Dortmund and got the point at Leipzig, you didn't really necessarily think about that. And uh, now it looks really, really, really bad. Uh, I don't necessarily want to adjust the standings, it's just now to see um, kind of how the current performance is with uh, points average. You see Bayern right on track where you would expect them to, to be. Uh, Dortmund still a little bit more on the disappointing side, side having more expected than uh, projected points. Um, Augsburg still having a strong season, Union Berlin of course having a strong season and also Freiburg. Uh, I'm actually amazed how Stuttgart is really staying course. And of course Schalke and now Mainz really, really, really bad. Bielefeld outperforming themselves a little bit. However, if you've seen my Eredivisie slash non-Premier League uh, review video, you already saw that I now make the new feature that we rank by expected points. So here is my expected final table where I ran 10,000 sim simulations from the Bundesliga based on the current result and then average it out. So what you see here is these expected final standings. Uh, in the first column after the name you see the relative strength. Uh, this is not the the strength ra rating but how they relate to each other you see Bayern a little bit ahead of the pack Do Le Leipzig and Dortmund are uh, close to, to each other and yeah on the bottom is of course Schalke uh, wins draw losses is averaged out and uh, rounded to the nearest integer so there might be a rounding error we see already with Bayern the, if you take those they add up uh, to 35 and not 34 if I would give you another digit uh, would make the table look a little bit more messy but we would get closer to the 34 that it should be but most important are the points and we see Bayern still expected to have a sizable lead at the end of the season seven points that's big um, then Leipzig Dortmund kind of the uh, remaining pack and a little bit behind. Now what's this green shades here? That's basically the distribution of the final standings and you see Bayern uh, the deep green shade is basically they are very very likely to finish in first uh, but we also see that there is definitely a battle for second place between Leipzig and Dortmund uh, and Leverkusen maybe could challenge for third uh, but fourth but you, we can see those four are pretty much the Champions League places. Then we have a pack that I would say arguably goes until Frankfurt for the remaining two European spots, but there's a cup winner too, so I might be three. Union Berlin still kind of a little bit midfield. Freiburg, Stuttgart, Ditto, uh, they might, they could, but might not, more likely might not make an dent into the European spots. Hoffenheim and I would say uh, Hoffenheim, Hertha, Bremen and Augsburg probably just will avoid relegation, but it starts with Köln, the bottom four. And it's now between Köln and Bielefeld, a big battle, and then Mainz and Schalke are already gone. So you can really see it nicely, nicely how uh, the seasons might uh, shape out for these teams. Uh, I like this and I will now present this every round for all the leagues. For the next round, we have probably the most interesting matches on Friday between Union and Leverkusen. Uh, I have to say, Wolfsburg, Leipzig, there is not really the big standout tie uh, in there, but we have to see. I think Köln Hertha is a, a crisis duel that has to be seen. And also, uh, Curious Hoffenheim now also had rather two tough defeats. Uh, will they allow Bielefeld? to take away a few points as well. But I have to say the big name matchup is missing. The other thing that we will have, and you know, there's a midweek cup round a little bit, you know, two, two, two games, but that like, next round I will talk about. But what will come back next weekend is the Austrian league with one game. Let's quickly remind uh, us of the standings where we have Salzburg ahead of Sturm, ahead of Lask, ahead of Rapid. Sturm having a game less, and that's the game that's happening against Wolfsburg. This is Sunday at 5 o'clock. Wolfsburg against Sturm. I personally hope that's for a Wolfsburg win, so that Sturm doesn't take too much of a leap. But, you know, maybe it's good for the league to have it. I don't have nice graphics for the Austrian league yet because it's a little bit too complicated, but I will get there eventually. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the Bundesliga round. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.
拜。